What's up guys, TG back here with another video. The Mines Season 4 finale has finally arrived, and it was an insane episode. I know not everyone has been the biggest fan of this season, but if there's one thing that The Mines always does right, it's delivering a fantastic finale that leaves you hyped for the next season. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content throughout this season because it really does help the channel grow. But with that being said, let's get right into the episode. The episode starts off with Coco's funeral and if anyone watched my last video giving my predictions and my promo breakdown, I know there was some confusion because I accidentally said we see the suns unloading the coffin. I meant mines, obviously the suns aren't unloading Coco's body. But anyway, the Mines unload his casket and walk it over to the graveyard. And I loved this scene. It was definitely really emotional and a good start to the episode and a proper goodbye to Coco. During this ceremony, Angel isn't with them, but instead is just watching from far away. Each member says their final goodbye, sprinkling some dirt on his coffin. When Letty goes up at the end, she stares down the group, saying they did not deserve him and that they got him killed. Then we finally get the appearance of Tig, which we have all anticipated all season. He's in the hospital checking up on Terry. Terry says that he is sorry for begging for the green light to go to war after Tig points out it's been a shit show. Tig also says that it brought back the demon they all thought was dead in the desert. Tig starts to choke him out and was probably going to kill him, but he is interrupted by a nurse. After the nurse leaves, Tig gently pokes him with a knife and confirms that the devil is back. We then move over to Angel's house and we see him arrive home and pick up his son. After that, we go over to the Mines Clubhouse. Hank reveals that the Yuma, Stockton, and Oakland Charters are holding a meeting without them. After the location of this meeting is revealed, we see Jess step outside while dialing her phone, and Nestor sees her leave but does not follow up or suspect anything. Easy and JJ then meet up privately, and Easy says that he has a job for him that'll pay 80 grand. The job is to kill himself with that gun that has one bullet in it. If he does it, Easy will give the 80 grand to his family, but if he doesn't, Easy will kill him anyway and keep the money. JJ argues with him and ultimately refuses to do it, resulting in Easy killing him. He is absolutely ruthless and cannot be stopped by anyone this season. We then see the meeting with the other charters taking place. Manny is there along with a few others. They're discussing if there's a possibility that Easy and Angel took out Kanche. Originally, Manny is actually the only one on the Rice Brothers side, but eventually he starts to come around and thinks that it is possible. As they keep talking, they get ambushed by the Suns. One of them is killed and the rest are held at gunpoint and taken. Marcus and Tig then meet up to discuss the war and Marcus says that he does not have the taste for it anymore. Tig says that this war is because of Montez and reveals to Marcus that some chick came to them with his cut and that he was found on Mayan property. This is the first time that Marcus hears about this. Before leaving, Tig tells Alvarez that Packer's baby brother is back and that he has it out for the mines. That is the last of Tig that we see this episode, but it was so great to see him come back, even if it was just for a few small scenes, and I really hope he can make an appearance in Season 5 as well. We then see Creeper meet up with Cody, aka Kate. At one point, Creeper starts to walk out, saying that she doesn't have anything, but Kate names off all the crimes that he admitted to being involved in while he thought they were together. She also tells Creeper that one of the mines is a rat, but she doesn't know who it is. Kate tells Creeper that there's a way out because they don't want an individual, they want the club. So he can likely walk if he tells them everything. We then see Louie show up at Letty's place. He says that he's sorry about Coco and gives her his Nova. Coco gave it to him to pay off a debt, but Louie knows that he'd want her to have it. Back at the clubhouse, Alvarez tells Easy that he met with an old friend to try and end the war. Easy does not want it to end and wants to keep killing sons until they are completely run off the earth. Easy also once again mentions that he wants to make the Bequero deal, but Alvarez once again says no. Alvarez believes saying no will save my lives, but Easy thinks it will kill the charter. After the meeting, Easy visits Bishop and tells him that he wants Alvarez out. Easy says that he needs him and the club needs him and they need to get back on top. 
Over in Mexico, we see Benquero in a pool asking who he thinks is one of his servants for Tabel. It is actually Adelita. She says that his sister has a message for him. The message is say hello to mommy and daddy. After telling him, she slits his throat and leaves him to die in the pool. We then see Emily, who's still hiding out and dyeing her hair black when she gets a call from Aaron's number. She quickly rushes to her phone and answers it, but Miguel is on the other side of the call. Miguel puts their son on the phone for a brief moment and tells her that he forgives her and that it's time for her to come home so they can be a family again. Emily wants to know what he did to her sister, but he does not answer and tells her again to come home before hanging up. After the call, Emily drops to the floor and starts screaming. Izzy and Sophia are out for a ride on Izzy's bike when the sons pull up on them and start shooting. During the chase, the son's car ends up getting crushed by a semi-truck. Izzy then pulls over and walks up to the son's car, shooting all of them to make sure they're dead. We then go back over to Manny, who is placed on his knees and has gasoline poured over him. It's the psycho brother of Packer that Tig warned about. And we've seen him before because it's actually Isaac, the cult leader that Coco was with last season. Isaac tells him that he's going to die soon and that he wasted his life. Manny, knowing that his life is likely coming to an end, says goodbye to his daughter and says sorry to her. He also says that he'll see her again and tells Isaac he'll kill him in the afterlife for making her cry. Isaac continues to talk on for a little bit, but then he throws his cigarette onto Manny and he goes up into flames. After running around and screaming for a few moments, he drops dead. Isaac lets the other Mayan present to live to send a message. That was a very dark scene and very surprising, because I honestly did not think Manny's story would come to an end like that. I thought one of two things would happen to him. Either he was only originally nice to Easy because he was a spy for Conche, in which I thought he'd eventually be caught and killed, or he was genuinely trying to be nice and make things right with Easy, in which case he'd live longer. And we've known for a bit now that he was just trying to be a good member and do the right thing, and he wasn't a spy for Kanshi. So in that case, I really thought he was going to live longer and maybe even lead the Yuma Charter. That's how I thought the Santa Padre vs. Yuma fight would be solved. So it was definitely crazy to see him go like this. It makes sense given what we know about Isaac and how crazy he is, but I really do wish they explored Manny's character a bit more. Just because he was a cool addition to the show and I feel like he could have played a bigger role and had a more drawn out character arc over one more season. But I'm also happy that Isaac is back. J.R. Bourne is a great actor and I'm excited to see how crazy he gets next season because man, we already see, he is a psychopath. Afterwards, we see Felipe who is talking to his dead wife when Miguel shows up. Miguel brings up his mother's murder and when Felipe doesn't try to correct him by saying it's a suicide, Miguel demands to know why Felipe killed his mom and how he got Emily to help. Felipe says that Emily wasn't involved and that he did it alone. After he tells him, Miguel says that he does believe Felipe was present at the murder of his mom but doesn't think that he did it. There were two motorcycle tracks there, and he thinks Easy and Angel were there, and that one of them did it. Felipe says that Miguel can kill him, but not Easy and Angel because they are his family. After saying this, Miguel lowers his gun and his eyes widen. We then cut to a meeting at the clubhouse, and Marcus says that the attack on Easy wasn't ordered by Charming, and that someone went rogue. He also said that Chibs agreed to peace talks between the two clubs. Easy says that he wants a complete surrender from the Suns, not a ceasefire. But since Alvarez won't agree to that, Easy calls for a kill switch. Although all the members of the club have respect and love for Alvarez, they vote him out because they think the war needs to continue. This choice makes Marcus very mad since he is the one that built this club, but he says he's happy he won't be able to see it burn to the ground. After Marcus leaves, Easy tells Bishop he was unfairly stripped and that he's a good leader, so he offers him the VP position. Easy sits at the head of the table as president, and the first thing he wants is instead of being split between Northern and Southern Cali, they'll just be California. And with the amount of heroin they'll be pushing now, the world is theirs. We then see Marcus return home, he puts his bike in the garage and lays his cut over it and walks out. It definitely sucks to see him get removed as president, and it's going to be sad if that's the last time we see him as a mime. 
Afterwards, we see JJ's wife go over to Easy's trailer with her kids. Sophia answers and Easy isn't there. JJ's wife demands to see him because JJ went to go meet with him the previous night and never returned home. Sophia says that Easy was with her all night so he never went to go meet up with JJ and sends her away. Back at the clubhouse, everyone left the table except for Easy and Angel. Angel is worried about getting back into bed with Galindo, but Easy says that it's not like that and that he'll eventually get what's coming to him. Angel also says that he doesn't know who his brother is anymore because of how many bodies he's been responsible for since Gabby. But Easy reminds him that's how he's always been since they were kids. He's done the tough things that Angel and others couldn't. Easy tells him that he needs him and that he has to be all in on the train because if he's not, it will run right over him. When Angel asks if that's a threat, Easy doesn't answer but tightly grabs Angel's shoulder before walking away. We then go over to the police station where Creeper is. He says that he doesn't want a lawyer and that he's ready to provide intel. Instead of providing intel on the mines, Creeper takes responsibility for every murder they have been associated with. He says that he did it himself without the participation or knowledge of the club. This scene was so sad, but man is Creeper a real one. His arc is like the complete opposite of Juice's. When Juice had stuff on him, he flipped, but Creeper stayed loyal and just gave himself a life in prison sentence to protect the club. It's sad to see, but I'm curious to see where his arc goes in Season 5. After his confession, we get a clip of Easy in bed with Sally and Sophia, and the last scene of the season is the warehouse, which is getting burnt down with the heroin inside. I mean, what a damn episode. It was intense and did not waste a single second. A lot of action, a lot of emotion, and a great setup for Season 5. In my opinion, this was easily the best episode of Season 4, and not only that, but it was one of the best episodes of the entire show. Now, they didn't show who burnt down the warehouse, but I think the obvious guess right now would have to be Angel. He fits the build of the person who was doing it, and he definitely has the motive. It was clear that he's not totally on board with this deal, and that he is worried about Easy. This is going to be bad for the mines though, because the Santo Padre Charter was relying on this for their power and money. With that much heroin gone, they'll be in deep shit. Their war with the Suns will be much more difficult along with their conflict with other charters, and now Galindo and Banquero's sister will be pissed off. Whoever did it is going to face a gruesome death when it's confirmed it was them. By the way, speaking of Angel, Clayton Cardenas, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but he was phenomenal this season. I mean, most of, if not all the actors have been great, but he really stood out, so I definitely have to give him credit. The scene between Felipe and Miguel was also phenomenal. That was a really emotional and deep scene. I love both of their characters so much, so I really hope they get more screen time in Season 5. It was also really crazy to see Easy finally take the president's seat. Him as president will be scary, because we saw how dark he got this season. He wants to wage war on the Suns, and he will kill anyone in his way. That is going to be it for this video, breaking down this episode and giving my thoughts. Like I said, I think it was one of the best episodes of the entire series. It was really phenomenal on so many levels. I'm going to try and upload a few more Minds videos just giving some early Season 5 predictions and I'll also let you guys know when it officially gets greenlit because it hasn't yet but I'm sure it will. Thank you to anyone that has been watching my Season 4 recap and prediction videos. It means a lot and the Minds and Sons of Anarchy community is a really a fun one to be a part of. So that's it for this video, but leave a like, subscribe, and comment what you thought of this episode and the season down below.